been there that first Easter morning, it's likely that many of us would have been with the disciples, hiding out in fear, locked behind doors, alone with our thoughts in the upper room. I wish I could say I would have gone with the women, that I would have been brave and determined. I wish I could say I would have held on to my faith. But the truth is, we will never know. What I do know is Jesus came back for all of us, not a few who maintained their faith or the few that stayed with him till the end. He came back from the broken and the afraid, for the cowardly and the greedy, for the women in the garden and for the disciples hiding in the upper room. He came back for those who betrayed him and for those who worshiped him. He came back for you and he came back for me. So join me in the prayer of confession, knowing that no matter what, where we are, Jesus lived, loved, and returned for us. Let us pray. Beloved, before God, before you, my faith family, I confess that I have seen the sun rise and withheld my praise. I have seen my neighbor suffer and withheld my aid. I have seen love extended and chosen to walk away. I have seen divisions deepen and manage to remain unfazed. God hears you. God sees you. You are forgiven. God's love is like the sun. No matter how lost you are in the night, day after day, the light will find you. Rest easy. You are held in the warmth of God's love. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now we must pray. pray. Before God and before each other, we confess. We have yes. seen the sun rise and withheld our praise. We have yes. seen my neighbor suffer and withheld our aid. We have yes. seen love extended and chosen to walk away. We have seen divisions deepen and managed to remain unfaced. Beloved people of God, God hears you. God sees you. You are forgiven. God's love is like the sun. No matter how lost we are in the night, day after day, the light will find you. Rest easy. You are held in the warmth of God's love. Thanks be to God. Amen. All righty. I've got a question for the kids. Do you have any idea what is in this box? Nope. Nope? I bet you some people do. I'll give you some other hints. What is in this box has something we put away at the beginning of Lent. It's actually a word that we haven't said since Lent started. Shout it out if you know it. What do you, where do you think it is? Hallelujah! Guess what, you guys? It's Easter, and we get to shout hallelujah. Are you ready? One, two, three. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. A blessed Easter from the Sheps. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you deliver us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Testament reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter crosses the immense religious and social boundary that separates Jews from the Gentiles in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection so that God's forgiveness in Jesus' name would reach out to all people. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spreads throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on the tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to, to, but to those who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. 
The psalm for Easter is Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for, your, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. today is the Easter Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll the stone away for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look. There is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So here we are left today in the gospel at an empty tomb. Mary Magdalene, Mary, and Salome left afraid and amazed. And said nothing to anyone. They were given the instructions to go tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus is going ahead 
and there you will see him. Mark's gospel arises in the lectionary every three years. And this Easter gospel can take us off guard. So much so that there's an alternate gospel if we want to avoid the tension and maybe even the discomfort of this text. But this year, more than others, the news of the empty tomb, the Jesus not being there, and no appearance of Jesus yet, is the good news for the Easter message for us today. The gospel leaves us at the empty tomb, and the women at the tomb, and even for us, we are left here at the empty tomb to find ourselves in a strange state of being confused, of being disappointed, and yet possibly even an inkling of promise. What does this empty tomb mean? Now you and I know the rest of the story, but let's linger here with Mary, Mary, and Salome and their experience for a moment. These women came to the tomb with certain expectations and not one of resurrection. They were firmly in the grip of grief and mourning. They went to the tomb to do what needs to be done when someone you love dies. You know, if you've ever lost a loved one, you know what it's like those early days after death. You go through the motions of the things that need to be done. Their steps were heavy with grief. Their minds and bodies still in shock of their loss. But they were at the tomb to do what needs to be done. And as they got there, they were greeted by an open tomb. An empty tomb, with the exception of a young man a young, unknown man, dressed in white. And their senses are overloaded. They are alarmed, and yet this man speaks. He speaks good news, naming who they are looking for. Jesus of Nazareth, the one you love, the one you witness being crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. The women are told, go tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus has gone ahead of you all to Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. Now the events of and the promise of the empty tomb get caught up in the grief and the shock and the chaos of the last few days. And the women leave the tomb speechless in terror and amazement. What seems to be an end, could it be? Could it be not an ending, but a beginning? In the empty tomb, we encounter God who enters into the chaos and brokenness of our lives and disrupts the chaos with the good news of God's presence even in our darkest hours of chaos and uncertainty. Jesus, not being in the tomb in Mark's Gospels, pulls us into the truth that Jesus is on the move. Jesus is heading to Galilee, and the man in the tomb direct the women to invite the disciples not to stay where the, at the tomb, but to go where Jesus is. Jesus is heading to Galilee and is inviting the women, the disciples, and you and I on the way. It's here that God transforms what seems to be an ending to an opportunity of beginning again, proclaiming a promise that there's no ending in God's work in this world. This is good news for us today. A reminder in times of upheaval and grief, uncertainty and loss, even a pandemic, in the times we find ourselves clinging to and longing for normal, this empty tomb, in this empty tomb, 
we have a reminder that God is still at work today. We find ourselves stuck in chaos and grief. We long for a brighter future. We wonder what a post-COVID world is going to look like. We need not look with fear, but look with possibilities. We need to look with hope, knowing that God is already there. God is not contained by the tomb of chaos and brokenness. Christ is risen. And in the risen Christ, God is at work in the world. What may seem like an ending is really a beginning again. There is no ending. God is on the loose. God is at work today. And that, God's beloved, is the good news of the empty tomb. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. And sit. Share a sign of peace with our neighbors here and over on the camera. <laughs> Peace be with you all. And also with you. Awesome. 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 shower us with blessings. You have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promised, promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for 
for what you have made. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of new life in the resurrection. We welcome our new granddaughter, Esther Jane, to our family. Bless Esther, her parents, Taylor and Lori, and big brother Everett. Help them to adjust to their new normal as they welcome a whole new person into their lives, hearts, and homes. Blanket their home in God's love, peace, and grace. Here, so God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope, those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. We pray especially today for Carlene, Sandy, and Dave, Elna, Chuck, Joanne, Mary Lou, Dan, Ginger's cousin Michelle, Carol, and Becky. Assure them of your promise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of the Hosanna staff and my family, we wish you a happy and blessed Easter. We hope that the time you spend together this weekend celebrating the risen Christ provides you with many memories and a treasured time together. Just a reminder that we have drive-up communion today at 10 a.m. We ask that you enter into the west or the mailbox driveway, come up the drive and receive your elements, and then go park, and then we will commune together. So we hope to see you this morning at 10 a.m. And finally, we celebrate with Barb and Kevin Shep. We join them in giving thanks to God for the birth of their granddaughter, Esther Jane, on March 31st. We pray for God to continue to bless Taylor, Lori, big brother Everett, as they welcome Esther into their lives. Congratulations to the Shep family. God bless you. Receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep you now and forever. Amen.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.